when uh, Gerald um, was a rebellious teen, his bishop started hinting it was time for him to consider straightening up and going on a mission. And he um, read the uh, encyclopedia article on Mormonism and found that it mentioned splinter groups of Mormonism. He didn't know there were any other kind of Mormons. And then he found out about the reorganized LDS church. And so he went over there to see what they were about. And the pastor started telling him everything that was wrong with Brigham Young and how he needed to scuttle all that and just go back to Joseph Smith. Well, while he was visiting at the reorganized church, he met a barber who had a barber shop downtown called James Wardle. And at the back of Mr. Wardle's barber shop was a huge collection of all the early printings of uh, early Mormon books. And he had probably one of the largest private collections of rare Mormon books in the state. And uh, Gerald went down to his barbershop to see his collection and James Wardle gave him a copy of David Whitmer's pamphlet and said, you, in your spiritual journey, <laughs> you need to read David Whitmer's pamphlet and consider what he said about the origins of how the church developed. And when Gerald read that, and Whitmer talks about the changes in the different sections of the Doctrine of Covenants, uh, Gerald was furious. They were sure that Whitmer must be lying. So he thought, well, someone ought to expose this. If Whitmer's making this all up, there ought to be something done about this. Uh, but he wanted to see the originals. And so he got in his jalopy and <laughs> drove across Kansas and went to Independence, Missouri, not knowing anybody and visited around the, the different splinter groups. And while he was there, he went to the uh, Church of Christ Temple Lot group, and they showed him an original book of commandments. And so that verified David Whitmer's statement that the revelations, in fact, had been changed. And that started Gerald on his journey of uh, studying the early documents, find out what all had been changed, uh, why had things been changed? Why was the church covering up what had been changed? So that when I met him, he uh, very early on showed me Whitmer's pamphlet <laughs> that, to show me that these revelations had been changed. And because of that, I went down to uh, Sam Weller's bookstore uh, that's now run by the, grandpa, uh, the grandson of the guy that first opened the bookstore and uh, went in there and bought a reprint of the 1833 Book of Commandments and a current Doctrine and Covenants. And I took it home and got my grandma to read it with me. I sat with the current DNC and my grandma with the 33 Book of Commandments. And we went through the whole Book of Commandments and I marked in my DNC in the margins uh, where I could, if it was just a few words, I wrote them in. If it was a big section like we saw in these illustrations, I had to just write on the side, uh, see such and such page of the uh, Book of Commandments, because it was too big to write in. And going through those was a very disillusioning experience that uh, the creator of the universe surely could have said the revelations right. Why would he need to go back two years or three years later and revise them? But all of that study came out of seeing David Whitmer's pamphlet and rising to the challenge of, is he telling the truth? I can check this out. Um, and then at that time when we did our study, <laughs> back in 1959 in the Dark Ages, the libraries were just getting photocopies into the libraries at that time. <laughs> they did have microfilms, but uh, to, to walk in and get a 10 cent photocopy wasn't happening. Uh, but I went up to the University of Utah Special Collections and saw different photo reprints of the original books, in some cases the original books, um, and that launched us in, into our whole journey. So Whitmer was a big factor in how we got started in our research. <laughs>